So this is the 74 Days to Greatness planning webinar. And the reason that we've been doing it this way is this. If you're not aware of the days going by, of the time, then they, the days slip away. Someone once said, many people do with days and potential like children do on the beach. They'll have a handful of sand, and if they hold that sand there and do nothing with it, the wind will eventually blow it away, and you have nothing. Well, the, the time between now and the end of the month, the same thing can happen. And it happens most of the time. It probably happens 95% of the time. I, I'm a firm believer in the, well, they, it's, it's a bit of dispute whether it was a Harvard study or a Yale study. But the bottom line on the study was that the people who wrote their goals coming out of uh, college over a 20-year period, the people who wrote their goals and consistently looked at them amounted to only 5% of the group. That basically, when they look at 25 years after college, 90% of the people were either dead or dead broke. 5% were still working day to day, hand to hand, mouth to mouth. And 5% had achieved financial security. And so that just says that the fact that you're on this webinar tonight means that you're in that 5% because there are a lot of other things that you could be doing other than thinking about what you want to do to accomplish your goals this year. So let us get right into this webinar and cover this topic of planning. I love the quote from Albert Einstein, and I'd like to highlight it. And Einstein said that insanity is doing something over and over again and expecting a different result. And I like to hop on that because I guarantee that many of you who are here and many of you who will be listening to this webinar in the future, if you look at where you were last year and compare where you are this year, in many instances, it's pretty much the same place. Most people, 80% of the people really don't progress much year over year. They go through life in a, either a comfort zone or a mediocrity zone, but they go through life without fulfilling their great potential. Someone once said that the cemetery has the greatest ideas in the world because so many people go to their graves, make their transition without ever doing important things, the things they wanted to do, the things they wanted to be, and most of all, depriving the world of their great assets. God gave each and every one of us a gift, but it's our job to share that gift with the world. When we don't do it, we literally, I won't say we're cheating, <laughs> but I'll just say that the gift that you were given does not manifest and it will pass on to someone else. Why do people fail to achieve their goals at the end of the year? A number of reasons. Number one, lack of clearly defined goals. We talked about that bit a bit about that last night, and we talked about that in our mastermind session last night, and we talked about this last week in the 81 days to your greatness. Lack of clearly defined goals. If your goals are not smart goals, if they're not specific, if they're not measurable, if they do not cover a certain time period, if they're not realistic based on where you are, then you probably won't achieve them. So specific, measurable, they must be measurable, measurable, set in advance, realistic based on where you are and cover a time period. This 90-day journey to your success at the end of the year, we set the time period. And you had to set in advance what you want to accomplish. Goals set in advance. I asked many of you to send us three goals that you want to accomplish. And those who are new on the line, send me Herbert at herbertharris.com, herbert at herbertharris.com, your three goals that you would like to accomplish by the end of this year. So lack of clearly defined goals. The second reason that people fail is because lack of a definite plan of action. And one of the things we do with the success toolbox and with the success support system is to help you develop a plan of action to get the results in your life. 
without a plan, you will fail. There's a quote that says, when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Now, what is success planning? Success planning is an organized course of action which allows you to produce desired results. So when we say people do not accomplish their goals at the end of the year, it simply means that they did not do what is necessary. They did not have an organized course of action which would allow them to produce desired results. I want to give a, a relationship between your vision. You know, the scripture says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But they say they that have a vision, happy are they. So a part of our being, a part of our creation as a human being is that we're created with visions, with dreams. And when we have those visions and dreams, if we take action on it, you know, when you when you have a vision and you follow that vision, good things happen. In the Habakkuk, one of the shortest books in the Bible, it says, if you have a vision, write it down. Write the vision, make it plain upon tablets, that he may run that readeth it. Write the vision, make it plain upon tablets, that he may run that readeth it. So this vision thing is important. Your vision now is reduced to goals. Your goals are the stair steps to your vision. Your plan is your organized set of rules and set of actions to achieve your goals, which will then help you realize your vision. Action is what you take on your plan. So if you have a plan, and take no action, it's like not having a plan. The essence of planning is action. And then at the end, you get results. The interesting thing about life is you always get results. You get results whether you plan or don't plan. You get results whether you get up or don't get up. Whether you have goals or you don't have goals. And so the essence of this whole journey to the end of this year for successful accomplishment is to have a vision, have goals, have a plan, take action, and then get results. That's it. That is the key right there. And so with this, I want us to just take a little pause and let that sink in and think about your vision, think about your goals, think about the plans necessary to achieve those goals the actions on those plans, and the results that will surely come to pass. Let us take a brief pause. I want to make sure that everybody has a chance to get a pen, a pad, and just take a breather for a second. All right, we're back. So now we just left off with the idea of having the vision that leads you to your goals and your plan that makes your goals a reality that brings you to a, the realization of your goals. So what's the next step? Let's look at this. Your success plan now is the blueprint of your vision. Think about this. Can you imagine a skyscraper, a building being built with no blueprint? When you travel through the countryside, you can see homes and Sandra can look at a house and she said, aha, they didn't have a blueprint. They just built the house and added on and added on. And the house looks like, well, it just looks like an average, ordinary house that was built without a plan. That happens in our lives. If we don't have a distinct plan of action in our lives for how we want things to be, how we want things to do, and goals that we want to achieve, then we get results, but they're not the ones that we're looking for. They're the results that the world mind has in store for us. How do you make a success plan? What are the keys to making a success plan? I'll tell you this, folks. A lot of folks have resisted, number one, in making a success plan, to purchase a daily planner, to purchase a daily planner. 
I don't know why people resist it. Every success book tells you that you need to have a planner. You need to have a book that you live by. And this planner is really the record of your success. In your planner, you should have all the things necessary for you to be successful. Number one, purchase a daily planner. Those of you on this journey for these next 90 days, if, if you don't have a planner and you don't want to buy one of the expensive planners, buy a notebook. <laughs> okay. Buy a ring binder. <laughs> okay. But buy something that you can write on and keep a record. So number one, the purchase a daily planner. Number two. Now, 1A, we'll call it, to live by the three, the three Bs. When you buy a planner, the three Bs are by the book, by the clock, and by the calendar. And what this is saying is that over these next 74 days, you make a commitment to have your planner there. If you don't have it today, get it first thing tomorrow, but make a commitment to live by the book. Two, to live by the clock. In other words, honor time. Be on time for all of your events. As you move through these next months, these next months, weeks, days, ask yourself moment to moment, what is the best use of my time right now? And if whatever you're doing is not the best use of your time right now based on your goals, your vision, and your purpose, think about this. If you have no goals, if you have no vision, then there's nothing to judge the standard. There's no standard by which you can say, I can choose to read a book or watch television. I can choose to learn a course or chill on the corner with the boys or the girls. And so this idea of living by the, the clock says, now you value and honor time because time is God's gift to you. And what you do with that time is your gift to God. And then live by the calendar. You have to have a calendar, a schedule of when things happen to set your appointments, to keep your commitments. You've seen people say, oh, yeah, I'll meet you at 8 o'clock tomorrow, next Tuesday. They don't write it down. You're there waiting for them. They go like, oh, I didn't write it down. I didn't put it in my planner. So over these next 75 days, you must make a commitment to live by the book that each and every day to write in your planner, to live by the clock, to honor time, and ask yourself from moment to moment, what is the best use of my time right now? And to live out a calendar. Always have events, activities, schedule. Anything that is not scheduled will probably not get done. Step two in making a success plan. Write your vision, goals, and target dates in your planner. Write your vision goals, and target dates in your planner. Why is that? So that you can read them over every day. Every success book tells you, in no uncertain terms, it says to you that you must, you must, Write your activities down. Every success book says that. Every success book tells you to read your goals over two or three times a day. Every success book tells you that you must, absolutely, without fear, without fear, that you must say your goals over two or three times a day. The people who have outrageous success, they will tell you they do it. And what I have found is that the reason that most people don't say their goals, what they want to accomplish three times a day, is they don't write them down, one, or if they write them down, they don't schedule when they're going to be doing it. So for me, 7 a.m., 12 noon, 9 p.m., that's when I read my goal statement over. And so... Having all of that in one place in a planner helps you literally program your mind to keep it focused on what it must be focused on to get what you need to do done. Now, the diagram here is this, the, the 360 degrees of reality. In the world, if we look at the world as a 360-degree circle, there's 100 
and 80 degrees of negativity and 180 degrees of positivity. In this project to achieve your goals over the next 75 days, you want to focus on the positive, all the things that the good things, the possibility thinking. You want to leave out that 180 degrees of negativity, what can't happen, what what likes to happen, uh, what what needs to happen. Okay. And focus on the vision, the goals that lead you to your vision, and nothing else. So this diagram shows as you go from like, for example, goal A and then B and then C, and sometimes you take two steps forward and one step backward. Sometimes you'll take two steps forwards and three steps backward. But as long as you focus on your vision, as long as you focus on what you want to achieve, then it works for you. It's done. Having this focus on the positivity and saying your goal over three times a day keeps you focused on the positivity because during the day distractions come about negative things happen all sorts of things happen to you but if you can focus on the positive and read your goal statement over at least three times a day and be thinking it and feeling it all day this will help you purchase your daily planner write your vision your goals and your target dates in your planner and the third step to making a success plan is to write a brief narrative statement of how you intend to achieve your goals. I'm, I'm going to give you an assignment. I have this piece of paper in, in my pocket and I'll share it with you. It's all crinkled up and it's crinkled up because I keep it in my pocket all the time. And one of my teachers asked me one day, he said, I want you to write one sentence of what about embodies who you are, what you want to become, and the impact you have on the world. And you know what my initial statement was? It can't be done. And when I tried to write it, it took a page, then two pages, and I'm writing and writing and writing. And, and after many months and this i did not come to overnight but after many months of struggling with that what is one statement that i feel captures who i am and so this is going to be your assignment those who are on this webinar tonight to write one sentence one statement that captures who you are and i'll share my statement with you and you write it in what's called the absolute perfect absolute presence you use the i am principle so as you are doing these next 75 days to achieve your goals the i am principle what you say you are creates the vibration that then attracts into your life what you want and so my statement was this i am a healthy happy rich author speaker, teacher, and spiritual guide who brings enlightenment to the world. I'll say it again. I am a healthy, happy, rich, author, speaker, teacher, and spiritual guide who brings enlightenment to the world. And then I broke it down. You know, I broke it down and, for example, I'll just give you an idea. So, author, I am a healthy, happy, rich, best-selling author, selling billions of books throughout the world. I am a happy, I am a healthy, happy, rich, best-selling author, selling billions of books throughout the world. And so I challenge you who are listening live, who are on the class, that writing this statement of who you are, this goal statement of who you are, is a critical part of creating the person you want to be over these next 75 days. So let's look at and analyze how do you write a brief narrative statement 
of how you intend to achieve your goals. Step one, to write the goal. I must accomplish the following goals and list your goals. So one of my goals, I, I, my goal is to be a healthy, happy, rich, best-selling author. That's a goal. Okay. And when do I want to have that accomplished? That was my three-year goal. And this is the second year of my three-year goal. And so, and when I put meat on that, that, that meant five best-selling books on the top of the best site. In other words, we put meat on it. So when you write your success plan, I must accomplish the following goals. Goal number one, date to be accomplished. Date is critical. If you don't put a date on, it's just a wish. Example, suppose you want to save $4,800 this year and you've fallen short. And now you have basically 75 days left, about two and a half months. How can you rectify that? Well, if you haven't done anything, how are you going to save uh, $4,800 in uh, 75 days? That might be challenging. But many times, if you can just get back on the horse, they say, when you fall off a horse, get back on it. He said, well, when I set my goal last year, my goal was to save $400 a month. For, na for eight months, uh, Nine months, I have failed miserably. I haven't saved a quarter. I've let distractions come into my life. Then what am I going to do these next 75 days? If I set myself up for failure and say, I'm going to save this, this uh, $4,800 in, in two and a half months, it's probably not going to happen. But if I say, let me at least get the rhythm right. Let me save $400 a month between now and the end of the year. So my goal might be to save $1,200. That way, at least I'm on track now. And when next month, next year comes, maybe I can say now I need to make up for that year before. I know how to make four, say 400 a month. Let me up it to 600 a month. And that way, by the end of the next year, I should be right on track to what my, whatever my, my goal was. The reason I wanted to save the $4,800. List your goals. I must accomplish the following goals and the date they must be accomplished. Step two. In order to accomplish each goal, and, and you're writing this in your notebook, in order to accomplish each goal, in order to save $1,200, in order to finish my book, in order to get my body in a certain way, in order to lose 50 pounds, I must do the following. And then you list the actions that must be done to accomplish that goal. Action number one, date to be accomplished. Date is everything. If it's not scheduled, it won't get done. Action number two, date to be accomplished. So this idea now of writing down the steps that must be done to accomplish your goal and the date they must be accomplished meant be accomplished is the foundation of your blueprint. Step three, the most important things that must be done to accomplish each goal are. And so if you had three goals, I asked each person on the uh, the uh, success mastermind group to write three goals that you want to accomplish by the end of the year. So once you've written those goals, the most important things that must be done to accomplish each goal are action number one, goal one, action one, goal two, action two. Once you've completed that list, we go to the next step. Step four, the order of importance in executing these actions. Goal one, action one, date it must be done. This is critical because many times on your success journey, your ego tells you to make a list of penny jobs instead of dollar jobs. And so you can have a list of things to do to accomplish your goal by the end of the year, but you focus on the little things. You focus on the insignificant things. So the key to achieving your goals by the end of this year is whatever those actions are that must be performed and the date they must be performed, to focus on which one is the most important. Which one, if I do it, man, it increases my chance of accomplishing my goal by 40%. The next one, if I do it, increases my chance of achieving my goal by another 25%. This Laying out these actions in the order of importance 
and when they must be done is critical. Step five. Write the tools, resources, and supplies I will need to accomplish my goals are. You see, this is the thing about planning. Many times when you just go into action mode without having a definite plan in action, you get to a certain point and you go like, oh, wow, I should have taken care of this. It's like I'm saving money to buy this house. You know, I'm really working at it. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting my money done every month, but I ignore the fact that I need to have my credit score at a certain level. So now I work on that. I'm like, okay, let me, let me, let me tighten this up. I need to get my credit score. I need to maybe get a credit um, improvement agency. But the tools and resources that you need to accomplish your goal, make a list of them. And then the sixth step is the necessary tools, resources, and supplies we, will be obtained in the following manner. Whatever that thing is, and then the date it must be done. Folks, every corporation functions like this. Every company, they have entire planning departments that lays out, when they say a business plan, think about this. If you ever go to get money for your company, the first thing they ask you is a business plan. And this is really all that a business plan is. This is just a business plan applied to life. This is your life plan. But when you can write your success plan in this way, you increase your odds of achieving and accomplishing the things you want to do exponentially. So now once you've written the success plan, and this is a big thing, and, and I'll tell you this. I think Abraham Lincoln said that if you have to cut a tree down, spend 90% of the time sharpening the axe. And so this idea now of writing that, that goal statement, it may take you a day, it may take you a week. Don't half write it. When you go to the bank and ask for a business plan, they want that plan top to bottom. You don't get to a point where you're going, then we'll figure out the rest. That business plan must be so tight it covers every eventuality. It covers the goals. It covers the, the, the daily method of operation. When you do that for yourself, a personal success plan, nothing is impossible. So once you've done, written your plan, now you can read, study, and memorize it. And you see, this is critical. This goes back to that 180 degrees of positivity. As long as you have your written plan and you can read it over, then whenever interruptions come, you look at your plan. Oh, man, I got it today. I, got, I really got to make 10 calls. Got to make my 10 calls. I understand. Take care. Have a nice time. Someone stopped in town the other day. They said, man, we're, we're passing through. Um, you know, we'd love to have lunch. Can't do it. Can't do it. Already had my day planned and everything that day was nothing I could reshuffle. Now, this is a person, a, a good friend, and I really would wanted to do it. But when I looked at the things that had to be done that week, there was no way I could take off those particular. And, you know, with friends, it's not going to be an hour lunch. You know, they say, oh, we're going to meet for an hour. That's not going to happen. You, eat, you sit there and you start talking, you're going to be there for three or four hours. So reading, studying, and memorizing your success plan. And see, by having it in your plan, you pick it up and you can read it every morning. Read it over. You know, I am a healthy happy, rich, author, speaker, teacher, spiritual guide who brings enlightenment to the whole world. So whatever your statement is, read it over three times a day at least. Then step eight, monitor your plan. You see, the first key is to stick with a plan. And the second key is to monitor and critique your plan. Give a plan enough time to work. If it's just not working, to make adjustments. There are times when you say, hey, man, I gave it the, the old college try. I worked at this thing. I did my best. I put in the time. Many times, most people quit before the plan has a chance to operate. But when you monitor your plan on a daily basis, this puts you in an entire different position to be able to complete the things you want to complete over the next 75 days. 
And that's why we have our success support system, because when you look at all of these moving parts on accomplishing your goals, there's no puzzle why 80% of the people just don't get out the box. As they say, the 80-20 rule that no matter what happens, only 80% of the people are going to do only 20% of the people are going to do it. And those 20% are going to have more success, be more wealthy than the, 80, the other 80%. The things that pull you off from doing what you need to do when I, that 180 degrees of positivity, sometimes just bad habits, negative thinking, but it pulls you away from what you're supposed to be doing. So that's why we have the, the success support system, the success network support system. And it's a support team. The purpose is to support the team members in achieving their goals by the end of this year. Let me tell you some of the things we did. Last night, we had a Wednesday night super, um, mastermind session. Every Wednesday night, we did a mastermind session. We have some people that were on last night, and they'll share a little about it. We did the Wednesday night mastermind session where we did a meditation. We had a, a success lesson. We talked a bit about goal setting and uh, a little planning. We had some team lessons. We had introductions where everybody told what they were, who they were, and what they were about, and talked about some of the things they want to accomplish. Uh, we we do a weekly recap where basically each each Wednesday you set your intentions of what you want to do. And then when we recap, when we come back in, we say, well, how'd you do? And we talked about uh, victories and lessons. What did you accomplish out of the things you set out to do? You know, what did you learn from accomplishment? What did you learn when you didn't accomplish it? You don't fail, you just get a lesson. And then we talked about their weekly goals. Everyone made goals for this week, the things they want to do between now and next Wednesday. Every Saturday morning, we have a success mentorship class where we're getting new material, new information. And this gives you a chance to interact with other positive people just like yourself and get a new lesson every month. Keeps every, yeah, every week keeps you growing. We've done over 292 lectures. So as a part of this whole 75-day journey to participate in these success mentorship classes, and they're 8 o'clock Saturday morning, so that's just when it is. Someone said, well, Doc, I can't get up so early. Well, if it's not that important to you, it's okay. You know, that's when they, that, if you want to run with the big dogs, you got to run when the big dogs run. A, a group of millionaire, a mastermind millionaire group I was affiliated with once. And, and I asked him, I said, why do you guys meet at 6 o'clock on a Monday morning? Every Monday morning, they went back years. Why do you meet at 6 o'clock? He said, because all of us are CEOs and doing other things. We're generally in our office between 7.15 and 7.30. And so the only time we can come together is 6 o'clock in the morning. And I was like, wow. And he said to me, a number of people have been complaining about, you know, they wanted to be a part of it, but they why they have to meet at 6 o'clock? And the man said to me this. He said, if you want to run with the big dogs, then you need to run when the big dogs run. So, 8 o'clock Saturday mornings. We also daily accountability checkups. And one of the things we did in the meeting last night is folks are going to pair up in, in teams, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, and they're going to each day talk to each other about five minutes as a checkup on their accomplishments. And you get access, access to the success vault. Once you start a, a success journey, your mind becomes hungry. You want to learn new things. You want to meet new people. And so this um, Success Vault has over 60 lectures that we've done that you can listen to. Maybe you need to overcome procrastination or how to refocus your life. And then one of the things that I'm really super excited about is two 35-minute personal coaching sessions a month with me. Because this is a journey for me, too. I want to see. I want to be like a proud papa where each one of the children succeeds and accomplishes what they want to accomplish over these next 75 days. We also talk a bit about the success toolbox, and I'm going to just go through that quickly because I want everybody to uh, meet and to chat a bit with those who were on the mentorship class night, the mastermind class last night. And of course, the success toolbox is at the core of all the things that we do. And the reason is because it's the resource. It has 
the 12 Universal Laws of Success is the core book. So you have not only the book, but you have the, the workbook and you have the audio book. And the workbook gives you a chance to crystallize your knowledge. The audio book gives you a chance to listen while you're driving and sleeping and help condition your mind over these 75 days. Can you imagine this? When you accomplish these goals over these next 75 days, can you imagine starting out next year with that, that vibration of victory? Woo! The workbook has over 70 pages of exercises. It helps crystallize your knowledge. The audio book is over six hours of recorded information. And then the New You Home Study Course, which is at the core of the whole program, because each one of you right now is going to assess where you're at. Now that you've made a commitment to go on the 75J journey, to assess where you're at, to address some of the changes that need to be made, to set some new goals, and then to develop action plans. And that's why I say the home study course and the 12 Universal Laws of Success are your resource that when you use them, you have everything you need to get anything you want. There's also a nice 54-minute audio, a live interactive audio of a seminar we did in Detroit, Michigan, which will give you a whole nother perspective on not just learning, but even teaching from the book. The 12 affirmation poster comes with it to help program your mind with positive affirmations every day. There's some other bonuses, a law of command audio, because one of the key things over these next 75 days is battling you, helping you get out of your own way Get past your own blocks to achieve what you want to do. So we have an interesting program now. We have, we call it the journey to greatness. And the whole journey, you know, you say, well, what is all this about, Doc? Well, the entire journey is really designed for people who have purchased the success toolbox. And of course, the success toolbox is $47. But the entire journey, which includes the support system, is $247, and that's what we're saying. We're saying, when you've heard all that you've heard tonight, wouldn't you want to be a part of this group, working together, striving to help each other accomplish their goals? Wouldn't you want to own the success toolbox and have all the tools you need to get anything you want? For those of you who already have the success toolbox, then you can get onto the mentorship group with a $200 investment in yourself. So let me just wrap up. You can buy the complete success system, which gives you the success toolbox plus the success support system. You can go to the website, lifeskillinstitute.org, and you'll see success support system. You can click on it and you can get the whole package for 247 or you can get just the success system if you already have the success toolbox. Otherwise, if you just want to start off with the success toolbox, go to herbertharris.com and click on success toolbox. It's only $47, and that's the first step in the journey. Call me at 910-262-2680 if you have any questions. So those of you who are just watching uh, on the, uh, the live broadcast, thank you so much for being with us. And now we're going to hear from some of our people who have were in the success mentorship class last night. 